Buongiorno YouTube and welcome to my latest video. So as you can see in the background there, we have today an Italian machine, a 2008 Ducati Monster 696, which was kindly lent to me by Mr. Koyama. So thank you Koyama-san. So today I'm gonna to be riding the bike uh, around some of the nice roads in the Aichi Prefecture near Toyota. And we're gonna put it through its paces. So first, let's have a look around the bike. <laughs> Alright guys, so this is Saul Sands, that's his name, 2008 Ducati Monster 696, which is kind of lent me for a whole week this time, as my KTM is broken yet again. So this model is, as I said, the 2008, which is one of the first ones. So it comes with Showa upside down forks. So it's uh, not the usual posh Olin suspension, but it's pretty good. The brakes obviously, Sasuga Italia, good job Italians, they put Brembo's on, of course, and the wheels, can you see that there, Marchesini, so they're very good quality lightweight wheels. So the bike is uh, basically a 700cc, almost 700, V-twin, and I would say it was kind of like a precursor to the MT-07s, obviously the SV650 has been around for a long time, but this is in the same category I would say like a middleweight naked. So what do I think of the bike so far? I've ridden it for maybe six hours in total today and unfortunately this bike has got a slipping clutch so I haven't been able to properly you know rag the tits off of it but I've been able to enjoy it nonetheless and so far my sort of first impressions are that the handling is superb. Um, the power obviously like I said the clutch is slipping so I couldn't say for sure but the power that was available to me was more than enough I would say. It's a great handling bike. Styling wise too I think it's pretty decent. Headlight is maybe ahead of its time really that kind of design. Carbon fiber front fender which is always nice. So if we come around to the back of the bike unlike modern bikes today as well the exhausts are pretty easy to change so this is a stock exhaust system but if you wanted to there's no reason you couldn't just buy a cheap old M can and stick it on and then it would sound fantastic so the shock I don't know what the shock is um, it just says du there's a Ducati Japan sticker on it for some reason I don't know why maybe it was recalled or something but uh, yeah, it's uh, handling wise, I think it's a, a perfect bike. It, it would almost be a great beginner's bike, I think. It's got, I think it's 80 horsepower according to the uh, Ducati stats, which is pretty decent for a bike of this size. Weight as well, it weighs nothing. It's a feather light, feels really, really nimble. And obviously with those Brembo's on, it stops really, really well. Um, but yeah, gearing as well. The gearing is absolutely perfect, I think. The, Gearbox itself obviously doesn't have anything posh on it because it is quite an old bike now. What's that? 2008, that's 12 years old. So it doesn't have a, uh, a quick shifter or a blipper or a slipper clutch or anything like that. Well, this one does. This one's got a slipping clutch. But um, yeah, the gear ratios are just perfect. You just, the, the throw on the pedal itself, the gear shifter is just so nice. It just clicks in perfectly. So yeah, I'm, I'm basically enjoying the bike. I think it's a great bike. So if anyone out there is thinking of getting a 696, it's uh, definitely a good middleweight naked bike. And this one as well, the value, uh, he said he wanted to sell it for 300,000 yen. So I'll put what that is in dollars and pounds and euros and stuff on the screen, but that's a steal I reckon for a bike like this. Right, so enough talking, let's get on with the test ride. All right, so what is it like on the twisties? Well, as you saw before, it's got the Marchesini wheels, which are very light. It's got upside down shower forks, which are average, but you know, pretty good considering the weight of the bike and everything. It's not under damped, over damped. Doesn't feel too soft, doesn't feel too hard. Doesn't feel plush, but it doesn't feel cheap either. So a bit of a middle ground. Uh, the tires as well, they're nothing special on this particular model. I think it's got uh, GT Angels or something Angel on the, on the bike, so more like 
touring oriented tyres but yeah absolutely no problems I'm liking the way it handles it's uh, obviously the weight of the bike really helps it's very nimble I think the weight is 162 kilos dry so wet is probably like 180 kilos or something like that but it feels um, it feels light anyway so on the twisties what is it like I would recommend that you go to my other video which is just a raw sound riding video which I will probably have uploaded by the time you're seeing this so check that video out if you want to see me just riding it without me talking bollocks like I'm not Adrenaline fueled bad boy California. No excuses. Now that is my kind of jacket. Is that it? my 100 RS. Alright, convenience store. Let's go and grab ourselves something to eat. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Probably don't mind me doing that. Uh, let's just park here. Let me take up the car space too. Alrighty, let's go and get some lunch in. Oh, a Christmas tree and firewood. Merry Christmas. It's not even December yet, guys. Alright, so what have we got in here? Ramen, cup ramen. Uh, I don't really fancy cup ramen. Tons of alcohol. I've been sober for six months now. I'll do a separate video about that. Uh, let's get a drink. Lemon tea, I reckon. Lots of different teas in here. Lemon tea will do. Boss. Boss. Who's your daddy? Crisps or chips? How about these? Sukiyaki flavor chips. Could be interesting. Yeah, why not? Alrighty. On the guys, Shimasu. Hi, on the guys, Shimasu. Hi, on the Huh, what about down here? Could be somewhere picturesque, isn't it? Hey, down by the river. Yeah, why not? Ah, oh, look at that, there's a bench. It's like they knew I was coming. Someone's left some shit there. But I don't get the fucking blame for it. Oh no, it's someone's shirt. Alrighty then. So, let's get the camera off and then uh, set up my little tripod so you can see what kind of lunch I'm eating. Alright guys, so I've just stopped down by the river to eat my lunch. So I thought some of you might be interested to see what a Japanese convenience store lunch is like. Maybe, maybe not. So, first thing, I've got this. This is called sukune. Now, sukune is basically just a chicken meatball. But uh, yeah, looks like this. And uh, it's got some kind of sauce on it. That's pretty yummy. Hmm, really soft. I think there's some like bits of cartilage on it or something every now and then there's like a crunchy bit but it's supposed to be like that it's not like a, a mistake or anything like that mm. 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 so this one is brothless curry udon so udon is basically just um, like really thick thick noodles I guess you would say it's uh, pretty popular it's People don't generally eat it in the summer, but it's kind of like a winter. It's one of those like whole, wholesome sort of like foods that you eat when it's it's cold or something. You want a nice curry udon or some sort of other udon. There's so many different varieties of it. It's like like ramen. There's like a hundred different variations of it. All right, so mix it all up a bit. Some mints on the top. Some minced beef. Some negi, what's negi? Um, green onions. Man, I forget in English. There's some normal onion as well. And fuck off. Don't fall in my udon, bitch. And uh, yeah, 
curry sauce all at the bottom, so you got to mix it all up. If you were a Jap Japanese, you would be saying, maze maze, maze maze, it just means like mix. Fuck off, fly, I'm trying to eat my lunch. Okay. So, let's get a mouthful of this. Oh, it smells good. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, this is good. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Ah, oh, good. You're allowed to make those noises in Japan. It's not rude. In fact, I read somewhere once that if you don't make noise, the chef might think that you're not enjoying it. So, when you come to Japan, don't be uh, shy or afraid to make noise like this. Mm. Hopefully you'll hear that noise from a girl as well. That's another story. And now, it's time for some POV. Parker chips eating amazing content. Whoa, fuck. <laughs> Shit. Alright guys, I figured seeing as I've come out all this way, it would be a shame not to go and visit one of the most popular sightseeing places in the area, popular tourist place. So, we've got another 20 kilometers to go, something like that. And I will show you a place called Koranke, which is famous for, um, basically for the red leaves. It's a kind of a forest and uh, at night time they light it up with uh, hundreds and hundreds of light bulbs strung up in the trees and it's uh, a very popular place to go in the autumn and the fall. So I think I actually went there a couple of times before in my really old videos so I'm guessing it's been exactly a year since I've been there. So I remember last time I went there on my M27 and I saw that ages ago now. So. Yeah, we'll uh, go for a spin out there and check it out. In the meantime, this road that I'm uh, following, Route 33, from the maps it looks pretty good, so let's uh, see if we can have some fun. So yeah, one, one of the um, sort of impressions that I've got of this bike, just, just it's sort of just come to me now, is I think it's the engine sound, like the stock exhaust is very, it's, it's actually a good sound, but it's quiet, but it's a good sound. But also the airbox is obviously, it's right here under the tank, so you can hear the, like, um, the, the rumble of, of the throttle, and it sounds really good, but what it started to remind me of a little bit is a powerful version of Chris's Vitpillum. So a couple of videos back I rode uh, my mate's Vitpillum 401. This sort of feels like a slightly bigger version of that. Size-wise, it's slightly bigger. It's still pretty small, a pretty small bike for me. Um, and the power is not amazingly different, but it's just a, just a nice, a nice balance. I keep saying that, but it really is. So yeah, this is. Um, it strikes me as a bike that would be, or is possibly, perfect for Japan for roads like this that are not not crazy fast like uh, a lot of you know roads in Europe and America like that famous tail of the dragon or whatever this would probably be absolutely terrible on that but um, on a road like this where it's maybe maximum of 100 miles an hour it's a, a real perfect bike so a lot, a lot of the time my reviews are sort of focused more towards Japanese riding conditions like you know I would absolutely love a Torono V4 but I just don't think it's um, it's worth having one in Japan when the roads are like this so I've constantly be just bit only been able to give it half roll but this bike like a, like a 400 like a 390 Duke or something you can really give it the beans the only trouble with this bike is the clutch is slipping so one thing I'm not sure about which I'm not able to review because of the slipping clutches is the power at the top is there power at the top end because as soon as I you know rev it really high the clutch slips so for me the the feeling of the engine is that it's great down down low there's plenty of punts there's plenty of torque but it feels like it's going to keep on going to the red line but because it's 
slipping I'm not able to to test that so that's something to bear in mind that you know if you're buying a bike based on my review which I, I doubt you will be doing but <laughs> if anyone out there is stupid enough to take my word for it uh, that's something that you should maybe check yourself because I think that this engine is probably gonna carry on being lively all the way to the red line it's just that this particular one it's uh, slipping which is, isn't really helping me get the right feel for the bike but low down it, like up to say up to 6,000 it feels bloody good 80 horsepower they say it doesn't feel like 80 horsepower to me it doesn't feel as punchy as say a um, MT-07 but yeah, you see the clutch is slipping there but it's it's basically enough I could ha happily have only this bike if I had to obviously I would like at least 100 horsepower but yeah I think this could be a bike for learners and also for people who just maybe you've got an off-road bike that you use as your main hobby and you need uh, a road bike just for you know days like this or for going to work on or something then I think this could be a good choice for those people all right guys so I'm just approaching the very popular tourist spot of Polanco and as you can see it's pretty fucking busy uh, I don't have any cash for parking which sucks balls but there is a place I know of that I can hopefully get to as long as these pricks with the fucking um, light, the lightsabers don't fucking go like no! no entries, no entries, no entry. This way, <laughs> this way, no, this way, no, I'm not going that way, fuck you. This is a public road and you can't stop me from going down it, you wankers. <laughs> so yeah, this is um, a sneaky way. I, always used to, I used to come this way on my supermotos because if you go, um, you can carry on, there's some sick like dirt roads. So that is what I wanted to go and see down there. That bridge is where everyone takes their photos and then over there can you see how red the trees are. But yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not fucking paying. That's funny. Hey Augusto, if you're watching this, do you know why they only write it in Japanese or Portuguese? It's because English people don't throw away the rubbish. Only you lot, bloody Brazilians. <laughs> don't kill me, Augusto. I'm only joking. Felipe too, don't kill me. Right, fuck it. I'm just going to dump the bike here and walk down this little, little trail. Alright, so I made it in your face Jedi's with your lightsabers. I'm not spending 10 bucks on parking. So yeah, basically I made it into the red forest, had a walk around. It's nothing special, I mean it's nice and everything, but not really my cup of tea. But uh, this is the end of the, the path, which is this uh, red bridge. So we're going to walk across that and then probably about maybe a mile and a half or so to walk to the bike. So uh, let's get on this bridge and do the touristy thing and get a selfie. I guess I'm doing a selfie anyway, but... Ooh. It's a bouncy bridge. <laughs> yeah, you can see it bounce, can you see it up bouncing up and down? It's like a suspension bridge. It's kind of freaky, but... Anyway, so yeah, this is, uh, this is the end of the road for me. So I have a quick spinny spin around. And this is uh, a place called Koranke. So it's a popular tourist spot in Aichi near Toyota. 
Right, back to the bike. So all good things have to come to an end. I've had to say goodbye to beautiful, empty, picturesque twisties to rush hour downtown traffic, which sucks. But actually I couldn't think of a better bike to be uh, battling this rush hour with. And as far as rush hours go, <laughs> I mean this isn't that bad, you know. Compared to London or New York or even Tokyo, this is a breeze. So, um, what have I learned about this Ducati Monster 696? Well, overall it's a very good bike. Um, there's a few downsides to it. Oh, you few things that I wish that it had that it doesn't uh, like a gear indicator would be nice sometimes I was cruising along in fifth forgetting that I had an extra gear and not knowing that I had an extra gear because oh, another prick it'll just stop there why don't you? Uh, so a gear indicator would have been nice um, I found the the menus were a bit a bit tricky now this bike has got a lap timer um, built into it and I was trying to figure out how to get that to work and I, it wasn't as intuitive as I thought but basically you have to use the uh, headlight flasher this one to set it for, for timing so when you flash it it starts and then when you flash it again it starts the next lap so on so that was a nice little feature obviously no particular use on the road but if you were doing the track that would be quite a cool little feature um, aside from that there was a couple of occasions when I was rubbing my boots on the ground so I guess ground clearance isn't as good as I thought but I mean the bike is quite small in stature over, overall so that's something to be expected I guess um, but yeah I think it's uh, a really good fun bike and I would highly recommend this for a beginner rider and someone as well like myself who would just wanted it would want it for commuting and the occasional blast on country roads but um, yeah, I had, I had a real good fun there, whoa, right in front of that guy on the scooter. Oh yeah, double whammy, what a fucking dickhead. Yes, you're a dickhead. Well, I don't think you understand wank or something, because, because, because Japan. Do they understand this? Wai, oi, wanka! Oi, wankauru, wankauru. Oi, onaniism. But uh, yeah, I think it's a very, a very good bike and enjoyable and fun. So I would highly recommend anyone who is in the market for a cheap, uh, lightweight naked, then this is the way to go possibly. So as I'm back in the city now, I'll just continue on my journey home. And if you would like to, please just take in the sights as I cruise around town. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. And as always, make sure that if you haven't already, please do subscribe and smash the fuck out of that like button. And I'll see you guys next time.